mass and weight. In this video, we will talk about the difference between mass and weight and then learn how to use a balance scale to measure them. Mass and weight, many people think that they are the same thing, but they are in fact not. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. In other words, um, if we look at these scissors and we wanted to measure its mass, I would tell how much is here, how much stuff is here. Weight, however, is determined by the pull of gravity on the mass of an object. So mass has to do with just how much is there. Weight is affected by gravity and the mass. The mass of an object remains the same regardless of its location. Wherever you took these scissors, they would have the exact same mass. But the weight changes depending on the gravitational pull at its location. If you took the same pair of scissors to the moon, they would weigh less because the pull of gravity is less on the moon. Many people use these words interchangeably, and when they ask how much does it weigh, they're really trying to find out what is the object's mass. One more difference between mass and weight is that mass is measured in metric units, and you can see m for mass, m for metric units, and the metric units that we normally measure in are grams and kilograms. There are other measurements, such as milligrams, but these are the two that we will use most in class. Weight, if we talk about weight in math class, we are talking about U.S. customary units of ounces, pounds, or tons. And just like we have lots of M's over here in the measurements for mass, our U.S. customary, which by the way, weight starts with double U, and then look at all these U's in these words. Ton is the exception, but um, this might be helpful for you to remember the U.S. customary words also, units also have U's in them. When we use a balance scale, which we're going to do in just a minute, you need to first be sure that you zero the balance in order to measure the mass or the weight of an object. Um, that means to, before, before you start, make sure that the this, um, ends of the balance are even and that it's um, reading as zero. Then you're going to try the biggest unit that makes sense first. Um, if you're measuring something small, you of course wouldn't want to start with the kilogram um, mass. You'd want to start with something that you think might be a little bit over the actual mass of the object. Then you're going to always add the largest, unit you, largest units you can without going over until it balances. And when you're done, you're going to find the sum of all the pieces. So let's watch how that happens. So I just took my balance scale out of the box and it has five pieces, the balance, this bar and then two buckets here with lids and I'm going to show you how to put it together, zero it, and then use it. The first thing that you need to do is to place this bar um, underneath here in the, there's a little hole, and these two little hooks on either side need to fit in the slots that you'll see when you tip it to the side. So I'm going to do that now and it helps to put it in this way and then turn it um, horizontally like this. thread it through there and then look for the holes and I now have it setting on the holes and that helps um, as you can see it down there it's going to help balance these um, trays. Now I'm going to put in the buckets and you're going to have this little um, V shape here meet up with this one here and you can use it two ways you can use it and put things down in it but we're going to use it by flipping the tray upside down and, and place something flat on top of it. So I'm going to get the yellow one in place here place the top on it, and then we talked about how we need to zero the balance. Notice here that this little line is not lined up with this arrow. That means it's not zeroed. I want them lined up together. So I'm going to move this white um, button here so that it becomes balanced, and I want to give it a chance to balance out. That looks pretty good. All right, so once it is balanced, I need to go back a little more. Now it's balanced here that they are, they are lining up. I'm ready to measure my object. We have two different kinds of weights in our class. We have the US customary set, which has um, pounds, which is this big green one, and the ounces are blue, the eight ounces are yellow, and the four ounces are red. In our class, we also have sets of gram weights in boxes like this, and we have um, 
five kilograms here. There are some 100 gram weights in some sets. These are 50 gram weights. 20 gram weights are blue. 10 gram weights are purple. Um, five gram weights are blue, are green, and one gram weights, the teeny tiny ones, are blue. You don't need to write this down because when you um, get ready to use them, right on there is printed the amount. You can read it when you're holding them. So the first item that I'm going to measure is the weight of this Coke can. Remember, if we say weight, that means we're talking about a U.S. customary measurement and going to use pounds and ounces. So I'm going to place the Coke can on the balance scale. You see it goes way down because this is heavier than nothing. And I'm going to first um, use my heaviest one that makes sense and see if this pound um, is more or less than the amount of the Coke. Well, since it goes down, this Coke can lays, weighs less than a pound. So now I'm going to go with the half a pound, which is the 8 ounce one, and place that on there, and it doesn't make it go down. Watch again, if I put another one, another half pound on there, that's going to be a pound, so it's going to go down. So I want to go to the next biggest unit, which would be a 4 ounce, that's like a quarter of a pound, and it doesn't make it go down. If I were to put this one on there, that would make a whole pound, because this is a half pound and two quarter pounds. Again, that's too big. So now I'm going to start by go using the next smallest one, which are the ounces. That still doesn't go down yet. Now you can see down here that that went too far, went too far down. So this amount is heavier than the Coke can. This amount is lighter than the Coke can. Well, this is 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 1 is 13, and this was 14. So we can say that our best estimate for the weight of the Coke can is some number between 13 and 14 ounces. For now, our best estimate, since we don't have anything smaller than an ounce, would just to say 13 and a half ounces would be our best estimate for the weight of this Coke can. Now we're going to measure the mass of this pair of scissors here. Remember, mass is a metric unit, and we're going to measure in kilograms or grams. So I'm going to place the, and before you ever start, remember to always check that your balance scale is zeroed, and mine is. So I'm going to place the scissors on the balance. Um, of course, you remember you want to start with your, big, with your biggest one, but the kilogram is way too heavy. That doesn't make sense. So the next biggest one that I have is the 50 gram weight here. And that makes it go too far down, so it's not going to be 50 grams. I'm going to try a 20 gram, my next biggest one. Still too heavy, but it's looking close. So now I'm going to go to the 10 gram, which is here purple. So it's between 10 and 20 grams. So I'm going to add my next biggest piece, which will be 5 gram. Oh, that's getting closer. And now I'm going to see it's getting really close. I'm going to add 1 gram at a time. So I'm at 15, 16. It's still really close. I'm going to see add one more and see if it goes over. This will be 17. All right, so it actually is a tiny bit over. I'm going to go back. I think 16 looked closer to the correct amount, so I'm going to give it a minute to um, balance out, and that looks good. So we're going to say that the scissors, the mass of the scissors is 10 plus 5 plus 1. That would be 16 grams.